Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. I want to talk about how my Harvard psychologist love bombed me. Love bombing we only think about in romantic relationships between men and women, predominantly, um, and predominantly the men love bombing the woman, and how they're usually narcissistic men who love bomb women, getting them hooked, and then like a light switch, totally changing and having no feeling or interest at all in them. Well, this is what happened with me, to me rather. It happened to me with my Harvard psychologist, Dr. Richard Geis. I wrote a book about it, and I'm gonna put the link down below in the description. Now, love bombing is, which usually happens in romantic relationships, usually by men, is when a person showers you with attention, affection, their time, constant texting, constant emails, constant phone calls, always want to see, they always want to see you, um, compl constant compliments, constant gifts. Think about a bomb. That's why they call it love. We all know that what love means, right? And a bomb is like, like a bomb going off, <laughs> like, like an explosion. All right. When you think of bomb, don't you think of the word like an explosion, an explosion of praise, an explosion of attention, an explosion of gifts in, in their time. And, texts and emails. Well, this is what happened to me in my therapy. It, it all began in 2005. Um, I had lost both of my parents back to back within three months. I was 38 years old. Um, my mother dropped dead on the floor of cardiac arrest. And at, when she died, my father was in McLean's Mental Hospital because my father had um, paranoid schizophrenia. So he wasn't even at home at the time. She died alone. And he was in the hospital for mental illness. I had to tell him that his wife died. And then two weeks later, he was hospitalized with terminal liver, liver cancer. So everything just happened back to back, back to back. And I was only 38 years old, and I was an only child. I had nobody else at all in my life, no one. And I had a very sick son who was in an institution with, who had um, pneumococcal meningitis. And it was just horrendous, horrendous. So I was looking for a psychologist, and I found him on Psychology Today's website, Psychology Today. Um, you know, they have a, their picture and they have their profile, um, also their contact information and everything on that website. So you can read about, um, you know, find out a little bit about them before you go ahead and, you know, try to contact them, see if it would be a good fit. So I read his profile and I thought he'd be a good fit. And right from the get-go, he loved bonding when he told me he wanted to see me like five hours a week and i said i never heard of that first of all second of all my insurance sure wasn't going to take care of five hours of therapy a week insurance usually only pays for like one session a week he told me don't worry about the money you don't have to pay like what you're gonna do all this for nothing like a red light, a light bulb should have flashed in my head. Like, this is total love bombing. He gave me his house number and name. His, he gave me his, I had his cell phone number. I had his private house phone number. He invited me to Maine on his vacation. I mean, he told me I could call him any time of day, day and night. 
I mean, he came on, he, he, he'd go over, get off his shrink chair and come over and sit with me on the couch, put his arms around me. I sat in his lap. I even grabbed his manhood. All of these things I did. And like, he just showered and showered more and more attention on me, telling me how special I was. And this is at a time when I had no friends. My, like I said, I was 38. My parents died back to back within three months. Three months. My father of liver cancer, my mother of heart failure. I was an only child. And this man just poured, like, love bombed me, like an explosion of, you know, attention, affection, always holding me, letting me sit in his lap, letting me stroke his arms and just caress him. I gave him a back massage one time. This is all true. We always lay on the floor together and he was sitting down one day on the floor and I started kneading, you know, with a back massage, kneading his back all the way down to his, <laughs> to his butt. <laughs> like this was all totally unethical. You know, I, I wrote this all in the book and also I made a complaint and I told them with the licensing board, I, I did that. Um, I did that complaint in January. And it was just like overwhelming, you know? But what happens when a guy love bombs you? He's usually, he's usually, narcissistic men do this all the time, okay? Then all of a sudden, after a couple of years, he told me his wife was complaining about me that, you know, I made him burn out, that, you know, like I was ruining his marriage. Like, I didn't do this. He did this all to me, you know? He was the one who, you know, love-bombed me, which was totally unethical. That's not what therapy's supposed to be about, and that's not what your psychologist should be doing. But just like a romantic relationship with the love-bombing, um, then he totally shut it off. That's what happens in romantic relationships. After the men shower you with attention and affection and gifts and praise and tell you how beautiful and smart and everything you are, then all of a sudden they, they turn cold, like a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde. And, and then he gas, was gaslighting me because I kept saying, you're changing. You know, I was heartbroken. I was devastated. I turned to alcohol. I couldn't understand he didn't want to see me anymore. He didn't let me touch him anymore. He never, returned, he never returned my phone calls. He never returned my text messages. Um, he never returned my emails. And when we were together, he was like distant, you know, like he used to always be so like in tune to me. And then when we were together, he didn't want to sit with me. He, he didn't want to hold me and like, I was like, I felt completely abandoned. That's the word. I was devastated. I felt abandoned. I was re-traumatized. I started drinking again. And I was just totally devastated. And, and I kept bringing this up to him. You change. You change. And he kept saying, I haven't changed. I haven't changed. You know? But he did tell me his wife was complaining. So if a man's wife is complaining, um, and she's a psychiatrist, so she makes big, big money. He didn't want to lose that. And she's complaining, sure enough, he's going to have to change his ways. Um, nobody wants an unhappy wife. Nobody. Because if the wife's unhappy, then the marriage... Got to make the woman happy. Got to make the woman happy, but... He kept in emphatically denying that he changed. And I was just devastated. I mean, he lied to me over and over again. This is when I realized he's narcissistic. This is when I said, this guy's narcissistic. I mean, he just like, he used to be the most caring and devoted um, person. And then all of a sudden he turned cold, um, heartless, 
lied to me, took away my sessions, and told me um, that he had to drive his daughter to basketball practice. And then when I find out later on, that wasn't true, because he was filling the session with a paying, a paying patient, a paying patient, a patient that paid. Because remember, he was seeing me for free, which is another big red flag. Do you know of any psychologist that sees a patient for nothing? I mean, a lot of them have sliding skills, but for nothing? So, I mean, this is a long, long story. There's a lot that goes into it. I mean, um, I had sex with another psychologist, Dr. James Barberia, um, and he saw us both for couples counseling. Um, it's a very long story, but that's not the point of this video. I want to talk about how Dr. Geist love bombed me. Um, I want to talk about the love bombing part, and I want to uh, make everyone aware of how that happens in relationships and what to look out for and um, so that doesn't happen to you because it's devastating. It, it, it is totally devastating when you've been love bombed and then you're gaslit then the guy gaslights you too saying that he hadn't changed you know that nothing's different and everything is different you know um, so just be careful when someone is you know especially a psychologist you know a psychologist shouldn't be touching you you shouldn't be sitting in a psychologist's lap you shouldn't be giving your psychologist a back massage you shouldn't be laying on the floor with your psychologist you shouldn't be calling your psychologist or able to call them 24-7, you know, in the middle of the night. They shouldn't be inviting you, you know, on their vacation, you know. I mean, these are big red flags. Um, they shouldn't tell you, oh, I don't care about the money. You can see me for free. See, all these things are big red flags. But then what, what happens is it destroyed my life. I mean, he even, um, he got me to think that another psychologist and me having sex was normal, you know, that having sex with my other psychologist, you know, that was perfectly fine. So, you know, he even like encouraged me to have that kind of relationship with Jim, you know, oh yeah, I, I hear that happens all the time, shrinks, you know, you know, have affairs have relationships with their patients. That's not supposed to happen. That's abuse because a patient cannot give their consent because they're in a vulnerable situation. It's a power difference. The psychologist has all the power and the, because they know everything about you and they're a doctor, they're trained. You, the patient, don't have any power. You're vulnerable. You come in trying to get mentally better um, after all that happened to me and it just re-traumatized me it brought you know because i'm a borderline i have borderline personality disorder from my traumatic childhood i was raised with a narcissistic mother so when he when he did this to me you know it just re-traumatized me all over again you know it, and this is what i want to get through to people i want people to learn from my mistakes so that they can remember, oh yeah, this happened to her. You know, this feeling special, this all this attention, this all this touching, um, all this communication outside the therapy. Um, I used to go, you know, sneak in his tool shed and meet him there. Outside of, you know, not, not during my therapy time, I would meet him there and, you know, go in his tool shed and fall into his arms and, and this was you know that's not allowed that's like um, a, um, a dual relationship you know that that's that's totally out of bounds it's a violation and um, this guy violated everything I mean I stripped for him totally naked okay totally naked while he watched not once did he tell me to put my clothes back on not once I got totally naked for this guy I was getting aroused during my session and I took off my panties 
and I wiped my panties on his arm so he would feel how feel my arousal. This is this needs to be brought out in the open. These topics need to be talked about. Um, I'm tired of hiding things. Uh, you know, I'm just tired of them. I'm letting everyone know. I want to inform people that it may be thrilling and exciting to be love bombed um, by anyone, your therapist or whatnot. But believe me, it's it's harmful, it's detrimental, and it's abuse. You don't see it as abuse in the beginning because you're getting showered with attention and affection and, and touch and, and compliments and. And their time, they're giving you all their time. And you don't see it like that, but it is. It is that. And I want to make people aware of that. It's very crucial to me to make people aware, especially when a psychologist is doing it, you know? Uh, that goes above and beyond the realm of any kind of, you know, <laughs> love bombing. <laughs> you think of, like, in a romantic relationship. But when your psychologist is doing it, and to their patients, that's really sick. That's a really sick situation.